All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm delighted to welcome back Andy Gold, who is in New Jersey. How are you doing, Andy? I am fantastic, and thanks for inviting me back. Yeah, it's been a minute. So, I mean, I'm glad we got a chance to reconnect. And Andy's for over 25 years. He's worked with CEOs, owners, and corporate leaders throughout the U.S., helping with sales performance. He is the creator of the urgency-based selling system. But what we want to talk today about is Andy has an exciting new book coming out in September called Innovate Now, Scale Up with 16 Breakthrough Sales Techniques. Maybe you want to show the audience the book, Andy? Absolutely. Is it showing? It's showing beautifully. All right. Mm, there full, it is. That's, that's full our technicolor cover. technicolor glory. <laughs> <laughs> So, Andy, the genesis of the book, because I, I was reading a little, a, bit, a little bit about it, and sure, you're, you're 100% correct, is uh, we've been overloaded with the negative stereotypes of salespeople. And salespeople, I think, in many ways have become almost highly self-conscious of, of their role because of the negative stereotypes. But you're saying you want to turn it into a joyous selling experience, something that, uh, and something that people can be proud of, that they can really help them uh, uh, understand that the salesperson role is not just critical, but it's, it's probably one of the most enjoyable and impactful roles you could have. Absolutely. In fact, uh, if you don't mind me piggybacking, sure. I start from the premise that the true salesperson is a hero. Mm-hmm. Because it, with, with, with the pejorative negative views in our culture of selling, um, if a person doesn't respect what he, what he or she does, if, if their customers don't respect them, if even the company for whom they work don't mm -hmm. respect them, they're carrying a lot of negative baggage into battle every day. And it's, it's hard to function. I think it leads to burnout. Mm -hmm. It also leads to people like tapping out. So you might have a, a person who's a real go-getter and does a lot of cold calling early in his or her career, but then they get to a, a place where they, they, they're earning enough money and they kind of tap out, they max out, and they say, oh, I'm above that. I don't do that anymore. And right. it's because they don't like the behavior. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, we offer a different model that, that, what, that I think is very psychologically healthy and also accurate to the point, which is the salesperson is a hero. A salesperson, the way I see it, a business developer rather, somebody mm -hmm. who's bringing in business is on a four-way crusade, a four-way crusade. First, you all have self-interest, so we're trying to help ourselves, right? Yep. We sell more to, to earn more. We're supporting our company uh, generically. We're trying to build the company. If you think about the employees for the company, mm -hmm. they can't typically create work for themselves. And so they, if the they, can, person, they can't even get paid if the salesperson isn't bringing right. in revenue. So I, in this regard, I see the salesperson as like knights of the realm protecting the employees. Mm -hmm. But perhaps most importantly, we're on a crusade to help the client or mm -hmm. prospect very often when they're fighting us. So there's an incredible irony in business development where we're trying to help the client and they're fighting us. They're saying, go away. They're saying, I'm good. I'm satisfied. I'm set. And so one way to summarize the essence of the selling project is this way. Mm -hmm. The prospect is on a false peak or summit. He or she has achieved some success or their company has achieved some success. Otherwise, we wouldn't want to do business with sure. them. But they're looking down, and they don't notice there's a higher peak right nearby. <laughs> and so the core of what we do in business development is we get someone who's looking down to look up. Mm. And can we not feel clean and wonderful about that? We're, we're opening the closed mind. The prospect's saying, I'm good, go away. And they have a closed mind. And so the key to business development is not closing the sale. It's opening the closed mind. And that's what makes us heroes. Yeah. And I, I, that's beautiful, Andy, I have to say. Uh, that's a beautiful way of putting it. And uh, when you think about it and you visualize that as, uh, as you say, standing with somebody on the peak of a mountain, but then being able to sort of raise your hand and say but look at that beautiful peak that's even higher that can lead to even greater success and i think that's a fantastic way 
way of putting it. So uh, in most things in life, Andy, if we're going to change, we have to help ourselves first. So how can salespeople start to change their own mindsets and attitude and adopt some of the, the hero mentality that you're talking about? Well, I, I, I would say at the outset is having a model like this mm -hmm. is, is a, a, a understanding what we do. Right. See it in the, seeing it in these terms is uplifting. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that going along with this is, is to pick a company that recognizes the value of a salesperson right. because the sales culture in the company is ideally something akin to the culture of the heroic salesperson. You know, in a myth, in a classic myth where there's a hero, mm -hmm. let's say there's a dragon that's threatening a village. Um, when enough people die, the king, the queen, the mayor, the vizier called all the people together in the town square and says, we need, we need a champion to yeah. go forward, right? And, and, and vanquish this. And if somebody will do it, they get half my kingdom and they can marry my son and daughter. And most people look down and they shuffle and they look at their <laughs> feet. But one, one person in the myth usually says, I'll go. Mm -hmm. And they go out and they meet, they have all kinds of adventures. And they meet on the road allies who help them, like with the sword of invincibility. Right. So the, the worthy hero meets allies. It's a big burden to carry yourself to kill yeah. a dragon. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the analogy here is the company has to be the ally that meets and supports the worthy hero. So the worthy sales hero is willing to go out, identify, and deal with the I'm good rejection. If you have a worthy hero in front of you, what are you doing to support that worthy right. hero? For, for instance – Dealing with risk aversion. We are by nature risk averse. Mm -hmm, we, te we, we tend to pick the less risky choice. So what kind of proving kit, wow toolbox, has the company put together to support the worthy sales hero so that if he or she gets in front of them a qualified prospect, they could do battle with risk aversion? So what a salesperson could do is learn his or her skills, get good at it, build up, build up a sense of persistence, see their work in, in these terms. Also, though, choose a product and company they can believe in, yeah. that they can crusade for, that's one, but then also a company that recognizes the contribution of a salesperson. Mm -hmm. and so I if, I could just, if I could just add sure. one thing, in a company that understands this, They've designed a system that generates respect and self-respect, respect and self-respect. And when a salesperson has respect and self-respect, they're turned on. And that's the major motivator. They want to be paid fairly. Mm -hmm. That's the money. Yep. But that's not the real motivator. The real motivator is they love what they do and why? Respect and self-respect. So where do they get self-respect? Because they know they're on a worthy crusade. Mm -hmm. And where do they get respect? With a powerful selling system, and I submit urgency-based selling sure. is one such system, you get respect from the prospect. And what does that look like? If it's not a one-call close, it's what we call PIKs, payments in kind. Yeah. So if I present to you and I reach you, you will do behaviors that are appropriate for a serious prospect. Mm -hmm. You'll check a reference. You'll fill out a credit application. Yeah. So the, the, the worthy sales hero wants to look for a company that has a powerful selling system, a powerful proving kit to deal with risk aversion. Those are my thoughts. Yeah, no, I, I love what you're saying there, Andy, because I also think then it, uh, it again puts the onus on, on the salesperson in, in many ways to say, OK, you're in a noble profession uh, you're doing great things when you're helping when you're helping clients you know see the possibilities but you're selling yourself short if you're trying to do this in a company that doesn't value you and doesn't support you so go find a product or service you believe in in a company that has the right culture to back you up so you can be successful and have enough self-worth to want that kind of company a hundred percent 100%. Yeah, 100%. And, and I don't know if you want to discuss it now, 
but I hope we could work in the idea of emotional intoxication, my yeah. formula for that, because that also ties into this discussion of the worthy sales hero. So if this isn't the right time, would you yeah. make a bookmark and remember, let's come back at some point. Yeah, no, this is fine. Let's get into it because I do think that that mindset, emotional and what you're calling emotional intoxication is critical because as you said, you know, the salesperson has to deal with a lot on a daily basis, rejection more so than ever, anybody else else. Uh, as you said, the, they may have to help a company's culture evolve to be more supportive of them. And let's face it, we're bombarded with negativity on a daily basis from so many different angles. Anyway, it's, it's, hard, for, it's hard for people. So let's talk about that idea of, a, uh, that idea of emotional intoxication, because I'm already intoxicated by the idea of emotional intoxication. <laughs> <laughs> so so to, to put it in context, I have been studying philosophy for about 45 years, mm -hmm. and um, I, have, I belong to a philosophy club. We meet, we read books less frequently than when we were younger. We've been doing it for over 20 years. And about, I don't know, about 14 years ago, we started reading Nietzsche. Mm. And in the book, Twilight of the Idols, Nietzsche talks about a state of intoxication when uh, we, man or woman, is overflowing with emotion. And, and, and although he didn't perhaps give the formula that I wound up with, it inspired me to start thinking about that idea. And here's what I found. The, the book Innovate Now is about how to innovate, how to mm -hmm. be more creative. And I found that if you could get, well, if I could get myself, which means I hope it's for everybody, if you could get yourself into a state of emotional intoxication, it has this extraordinary quality as means and end. So as end, we want to live in an exhilarated state, as an, mm -hmm. in an uplifted state. Yeah. But as means, it, it, it helps propel and you to a state of creating more new stuff when you're exhilarated. So... You may remember when you were young reading about a perpetual energy machine, which is impossible, I think. Mm -hmm. But this is this becomes if you could get into this mind state, it becomes a perpetual creativity machine. Right. In other words, you do something and that uplifts you and that that leads to more creativity. So I'd like to offer you the formula. now. Yes, please do. OK, now. I'm not saying this is the only way I'm saying this is a way it mm -hmm. works for me and. I designed urgency-based selling, and when I teach, it's built into the system to be uplifting. So to me, that's the biggest payoff, because it's how we live our lives every day, how we experience reality, and it's all in the mind. Mm -hmm. So here's the formula. Good, because I felt like you were teasing me there for a moment, because I'm like, come on, come on, I want to know. <laughs> so, so at the base is the heroic mindset mm -hmm. at the at the base is the heroic mindset and we've talked about that a little bit already yeah you know if you do a heroic act once you feel good about it mm -hmm. but when it becomes your bread and butter when you're out there tilting at at dragons and maybe sometimes at windmills like don quixote mm -hmm. when you're doing that all the time you develop a a heroic mindset you start to see yourself in heroic terms so that's the base. Well, rather, that's key. Mm -hmm. But the base is moral certainty. Mm. The base is moral certainty. So if you don't feel good that it's ethically good what you do, you're going to wind up hating yourself. Yes. So the base is moral certainty. And that's why this idea of the false peak and raising the customer's well-being is so critical. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not only critical um, – to opening and closing the sale, it's also cri critical to your self-esteem and self-worth. Right. Because if you know that every day your job is to go out and help people first recognize, even just recognize there's a higher peak and then say, hey, I have a way to get you there. I think you could feel really good about yeah, yourself yeah. when you say, that's my job. That's what I do. I help people, you know, get up to higher mountains. Yeah, which means then, we go back to what we discussed earlier, it means then you need to have a product or service you really believe in, right? And a company that you really believe in, because if you're going, yes. to, go out, if you're going to go out and sell that product or service, you want to know that the rest of the company is going to support you, but also deliver on whatever promises you make and that they really have the customer's success in mind. 
Yes, yes. So um, that's key to moral certainty is that you really believe in what you do. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not only important then that the prospect will want to buy from you, but it's how you feel about yourself. Yeah. So if you have moral certainty and then, and that's something I think that most, I think most people seek that. Sure. But not, I, I not, not everybody goes out and tilts at dragons every day. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the heroic mindset. So now you got most of the formula there. You're sure that what you're doing is good work and you're going out there as a risk taker and slaying dragons every day. And the, and the key dragon again is the closed mind. Mm -hmm. And so what we're doing here is we're advancing civilization. That's what we're doing here. We're doing it on, on several levels by helping raise people to a higher mind, uh, um, a state of well-being, a higher mountain. We're moving things forward in a good position, in a, in a good way. But by focusing on this, we're building self-sufficient individuals. Yes, yes. We're building a society or a part of a society, the selling piece, of, of self-sufficient individuals. And that's a good thing. That's a when great thing. When people are self-sufficient and they could go out and do things because – they have vision and because they have drive to do it. So we have moral certainty and then we have the heroic mindset. And then there's uh, two more pieces. Mm -hmm. The in-between, if you, if you look at them as the bread of the sandwich, the in-between piece, which came to me late, but I think is really important is the meditative mind state, state the meditative mind state. So my feeling is you could burn yourself out if you're in hero mode all the time, sure. you burn, you burn yourself out. You know, uh, when I talk about Nietzsche, uh, sometimes people like to point out to me, he went insane at the end of his <laughs> life. So for, for the purpose of your readers and full, your listeners <laughs> and full disclosure, but, but it's also so just as an aside that he disparaged, um, Eastern thought in the meditative right. mindset. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is there cause and effect? Did he miss something? I don't know. But I'm talking about my own journey now. Mm -hmm. This I know. My own journey I know. And I found that until the last 10 years, I didn't have a meditative piece. Mm -hmm. I started with meditation, which I find hard. For the last, I, I did Tai Chi. For the last four years, I've been doing yoga, and it really works for me. Mm -hmm. And it really gets me into the meditative mindset. And I find at critical moments, I slip into it even when I'm not doing yoga. Right. Yeah. So it kind of leavens or reduces the harshness of being in hero mode all the time. Yeah, I, I have to I have to agree with you there. Uh, personally, for me, it's it's martial arts, um, which is what I what I do. I think every I 100 I, percent I agree with you because I think everybody needs something that lifts takes their mind out of all the other stuff and focuses it yes. in something for a while where yes. they can clear their mind where they can be in the moment because we live in this society of as i said as we're bombarded everything you know, we're so distracted and bombarded that if you don't have something that takes you out of the moment and allows you or it takes you out of all that and allows you to be in the moment and kind of clear your mind yes. it, it is yes. very very difficult i agree 100 percent. and then the last piece which, I mean, in our society, at least as I grew up, this was the piece is, is, is the rational mind. Mm -hmm. Like it's the, it's the job of the rational mind to put all this stuff together so it makes sense. The problem is that I call it the rational grid. I studied economics um, when I went to college. I had a BA in economics. I didn't finish it, but I actually started a, a PhD in economics. So that mm -hmm. was my, my training. And I was very much a model builder when I was younger. And um, the problem I, I found, there was good and bad. Uh, the good is I'm always looking at models. I'm always trying to figure out how do you create something that works? The problem is I'm always overlaying a rational grid on something. And I needed, I found as I get older, if I wanted to be creative, I needed a way to step away from this purely mm -hmm. rational grid because it was way too deductive. And it wasn't inductive and it wasn't uh, creating. Now, starting a business. So I've started three businesses. Starting my first business when I was 30 years old, that's what kicked me into, into a creative mindset mm -hmm. because I was failing. And I, I had to come up with lots of new ideas. And so that, that's another piece 
that helps um, the developing uh, sales hero is that he or she, um, they, they have to get results. Yeah. And they're not going to be around if they don't get results. And that actually is something that, at least in my case, and I believe in many people's cases, it launches the creative mind. Mm-hmm. You know, necessity is the mother of invention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 you're correct. Is that if you always, if you excessively lay the rational the rational mindset over everything, it can be paralyzing because sometimes yeah. sometimes you have to just move on instinct or go with something or try something. And sometimes laying laying too much rationality on top of things prevents the creativity because you you rationalize the creative spark out of it. Yeah, I mean, just I have a mantra I offer. I'd say I say that when I teach, and I've been teaching a lot lately, so I've been saying it a lot lately. <laughs> is if you're not having a good day or a good week, a good month, a good quarter, here are four words that could revolutionize your life: bold vision, bold behavior. Mm-hmm. Have you been bold enough in your vision? Have you been bold enough in your behavior? And and that was kind of implicit in 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 the hero is that the hero does bold behavior. He or she does things that are out of the box. I'll I'll give you just a quick, tiny example. My my parents are in a kind of a retirement apartment and they're looking at moving to another one and uh, they want to move their furniture, but the other one doesn't have the same layout, right? So there were family members who have been kind of like doing incredible measurements. How do we move this furniture? Does it go in this room? Does it go in that room? Well, I, I called somebody at the new place and said, can we move a wall, mm-hmm. right? Can we move a wall? So I'm always looking at changing the structure. Um, we probably don't have time for yeah, it, but when I, I want to just mention briefly, sure, I learned go. this early on in my, when I was in college, I wanted to take a class that was offered at 7 a.m. and I slept till 10. <laughs> and I, I, I convinced I convinced the, the administration to change the class till noon so I could sleep late. And, and so that set a pattern in my life to never accept what I see. If something is man-made or woman-made, it could be changed. Gravity, <laughs> this is going to drop, right? Yeah. That's gravity. But if it's man-made or woman-made, so to me, that's bold vision, yeah. bold and behavior. I, and I Are love you doing that. that? Are you doing that? That's key to the hero. Bold vision, bold behavior. Yeah, and I love that because uh, – actually, I love that story because uh, uh, if you can if you can be in college and convince them to move a class so you can sleep in, I mean, we know your career was obviously set from there on in. You, it was. You're a sales it was. person for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Andy, this has been great. We're bumping up against the end of our time. But before we go, I want you to tell people a little bit more about yourself, how they can find out more about you. And the book is Innovate Now. It's going to be out on September 10th. Uh, it's already on uh, Amazon, I think, for pre-order. So I, yes, I would, yes, I would yes, encourage yes. people I would encourage people to go and check it out because as, you can, as you've heard from Andy and I, he's put a lot of thought into this. And I think it's a it's a critical subject that we 100 percent agree with. So, Andy, tell them a little bit more about yourself and how they can find out more. Yeah, well, I have a website and the URL is www.urgencybasedselling.net. And um, if if folks are interested in having a discussion about urgency based selling, uh, call me at 201-415-3447. My email address is andy.goal g-o-l-e at urgencybaseselling.net and i would just add that this grew out of thousands of sales calls i'm certainly not saying it's the only way to do it but this is how it was developed and i've tested it with over 100 clients and the typical client gets a 10 to 20 percent bump in sales when they do the program excellent this is great. Again, thanks, Andy. It's been fascinating. I'm glad we, we went a bit longer today because it was such an interesting subject. Uh, so this is John Golden, emotionally intoxicated from uh, <laughs> Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. I'll see you all for another expert interview soon. Thank you.